I was granted an opportunity to interview Paul Tucker on his work on documentaries. This caused me to think about what direction I wanted to go in and to reevaluate what entices me about doing documentaries myself. It is nearly impossible for me to choose one task in the making of a documentary. I like them all. I think, however, that I'm not as good with the technical camera side of it, but I am good at seeing what I want and knowing where I want it to go. I'm really good, I believe, in setting the tone of the piece with editing. So much can be said and felt by the manipulation of the filmed pieces, the photographs, the music, and the narration interviews. If you work in television for as many years as I have done, which is 20 odd, you work on a lot of programs that you might not choose to work on necessarily they might not be the, what I mean is they might not be the programs that you choose to watch and they're always great great fun to make and um, uh, you work with people that are fun to meet and you know I've never regretted any of the programs that, that I've done and they're watched by lots of people or by not by many people it doesn't really matter um, of course it matters um, uh, but with a documentary with the documentaries that I've made either the two that I've made through monkey puzzle or the couple that I've been asked to make by other production companies, they're closer to my heart, I suppose, that's the difference. They're about subjects that matter to me. I didn't actually know about Peter Manuel until I started working on it, but it turned out it was a, a compelling, fascinating, intriguing story about Glasgow as much as it was about him. I love making factual films, but I like to make them interesting. There's no point in making a film about actual events in history if you're going to put people to sleep with them. That's what originally drew me to Ken Burns, and that's what I admire about the two documentaries I saw that Paul Tucker directed. The one about uh, the murderer, Peter Manuel, and the one about the travies of the singer-songwriter, Edwin Collins. Both of them were handled with true insight. I've got not a bad track record in working television, and I still do it sometimes in the summer. Um, and I think that does put me in quite a good position to pass on relevant skills to people if they want to if they want to hear them and, and, and learn from mainly from the mistakes I've made on the way. It doesn't always work out that way, but you know that's that's what the plan is. And the Edwin Collins thing was something that was that was really important to me and really important that I got that as right as I could do. So that's the difference really I think. It's something that's, uh, you know, I got into working in television for a, a variety of reasons. Some of them were that I wanted to do an interesting job that meant I'd get out of bed in the morning with a spring in my step. And I suppose it was also important that I did something that, that I could look back on, on and say, I'm proud of that. And some of the documentaries I've made, or bits of some of the documentaries I've made, I, you know, I'm, I'm pleased with. And that's the difference, I think. There are many things that I enjoy about making documentary, making television in general. Um, small things like what I particularly enjoy is working as part of a team. Uh, I've never been the kind of person who goes off and does it by themselves. I've never been a self-shooter. I've never been a self-editor. So I work with three or four people in the field with a camera operator and a sound recordist and then maybe a producer or researcher. Um, and I would work, I've always worked with an editor, which I think is absolutely key to get the best out of your story. And then um, what I particularly like is when you feel like you've told someone's story well, or a story well, without particularly getting in the way. I'm not a particularly, um, I don't particularly feel like it's important that my perspective is in there, really. Well, there are pros and cons about working alone and working with others. 
the pros for working with others is that you have other interesting minds to bounce things off of and others input can refresh your energy and take you in a direction that you didn't see before possibly making a better film Um, of course, the cons are that you have to accept others' opinions when you might feel a little sensitive about the subject, and perhaps you feel proprietary about the topic and don't like the direction that others might want you to go in. to bring us together again. They say time is a healer. Remember the river, Jenny. Of course it's my version of the story, but I don't feel like I've got, you know, I feel like it's important that it's their story that I'm telling rather than my version of their story. And some people, and that's completely legitimate, make a career out of telling their version of someone's story. I'm, I'm feeling like I'm more of a conduit that I'm telling, trying to tell other people's stories but I also think that the audience is important as well and I think quite often people forget that it's important that I tell it in a way that the audience are going to enjoy it and enjoy is sometimes not the right word appreciate it um, and you you have a you have a I think as a documentary maker as a TV maker you have a, um, a responsibility to both parties the person whose story you're telling and the people that you're telling it to in, in some ways the challenges of documentary are the same as the challenges of other TV production. Uh, uh, lots of the TV that I've done has always been sort of lo very loosely factual based. So you're telling a story and it's, has a, it has a narrative that runs through it and, and, and that's important. It might just be a little two minute film that fits into another bigger TV programme. But with documentary I think that the challenges are to tell the story in the best way that you can and to help people tell that story. Working on your own, you alone can determine the direction that you want the documentary to move in. You are in charge and your word is law. Obviously though, you can get into trouble that way as you might be blind to certain soft spots in your work or you're unwilling to change to make the product better because you can't see that it needs to be made better or differently. Beautifully relaxing, energizing, renewing. All parks do that for us, the people who enjoy and depend upon them. But how often do we think of the history of the parks we know and love? This is a story of one of those parks, Central Park in Schenectady, New York.
In this first term of my MA at UWS, I have learned some invaluable lessons. I especially found this to be true of my motion graphics class. In doing the logo project and the movie intro project, I learned some basics that will only help enhance my work in editing film. Many times, especially in historical pieces that are before the advent of film or that are too obscure to have much documented film footage, using tools like motion and flash will help illustrate where photography is too limited and reenactment too expensive. What has really excited me is the understanding I now have that I need more in-depth instruction in both motion and flash. Enhancement of the skills I offer is my plan for the future, as well as finding employment in a small production company where my range of skills will be appreciated. Of course, Adobe Premiere Pro, with which I am extremely familiar, has come in handy, as witnessed by this cartoon I created during December and with which I leave you. Where did you come from? No! No! You can't have my milk! Ooh, this tastes horrible! I don't feel so good. Oh, everything is... Burp. Everything is so... Burp. Strange. Ah! 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 Stop growing! You're too big! Why are you looking at me that way? You don't want the milk? You want to eat me! Help! Where is that dirty cat? <laughs> I think I got away. I, I think I... <gasps> Oh, no.